Playing college football four years is very tough, but it's also very, very rewarding. And I think this past year is just a tribute to the hard work that I put in these past three years, and the team did. I mean, we, we won the most football games since 1985. That was probably the biggest highlight um, of my four years here. We had our ups and we had our downs, and I think we just stayed together through those and persevered together. Well, my professional goal is to um, teach and coach. You know, I want to definitely want to coach football. I got the experience from the four years at Elmers, which is going to be very beneficial for, for coaching experience in the future. What an atmosphere for game two of our doubleheader. When the lights come on, you will notice that it is darn crowded. <laughs> Augustana is the number three team in the nation. 18-0, 7-0 in the CCIW. Elmhurst, 7-11, 2-5 in the CCIW. The starting lineups are being introduced. I'm Tim Calderwood. Gina Veneer is alongside this evening. Brian DeSimone, a 6'1 junior guard out of Wheeling, averages nine points per ball game. It's his 18th start of the season. He's joined by Troy Rohrer, starting for the first time. Junior out of Bettendorf, Iowa, averaging 5.3 per ball game. Brian Foyles, his 15th start, 6'9 junior forward, out of Byron, Illinois, averaging 12.6 points per ball game. Augustana with three tall post players, Kyle Nelson, a 6'9 senior out of Deerfield, is the leading scorer for the Vikings this year at 13.7 points per ball game. He also leads the team in rebounding. George Dexter, 6'7 sophomore forward out of Bettendorf, Iowa, starts for the 14th time. He averages 5.1 points per ball game. Vikings are led by 12th year head coach Gray Giovanni, 217 wins at the helm of the Vikings. And they have been good for quite some time. Here's the starting lineup for the Blue Jays. A different look today following the contest at North Central on Wednesday evening. Deontay Foster, his fifth start. 5'11", sophomore out of Muskegon, Michigan. 4.3 points per game. James Robertson starts for the seventh time. 6'3", junior out of Peoria at 6.8 points per ball game. Zach Boyd has started every game this year. Tonight, no exception. His 19th start. 6'3", junior guard out of Warrensburg, Illinois. Leading scorer for the Blue Jays at 15 points per ball game. Joe Acosta's 16th start. 6'3", senior forward out of Elmhurst, averaging 3.7 points per ball game. He has started every game since his return from injury. Eric Dornfeld, a change in the post for the Blue Jays. 6'7", sophomore out of Geneseo, averaging 2.5 points per ball game as he starts for the third time this year. So, Gina, there's going to be a battle in the post, to say the least. Hi to you as well. <laughs> yeah, battle in the post. I mean, we're seeing so much height out of this Vikings team, and they've obviously formed quite a following of their fans here coming from Rock Island to support this team that has been outstanding and a team that's nationally ranked. And, of course, what we had just come from in the game with the women against Augustana, Elmhurst giving... Augustana, their first win in the conference. How about the Blue Jays hope to give Augustana here on the Vikings men's side of things their first loss in the conference? Hey, it can happen. We saw it just happen moments ago. If you're wondering, and I know you are, we are about 20 minutes late, and that is due to the fact that in our opener today, double overtime was required between Elmhurst and Augustana, with Augustana stopping an eight-game losing streak, winning 70. 68. Eric Dornfeld is in the center circle. He is joined there by Kyle Nelson. The ball is in the air. Nelson taps it, and Augustana will open with possession. The Vikings are in the navy blue uniforms. 
while the Blue Jays are in the white. Brian DeSimone on the right edge, working against Robertson, backing up into the lane. It is Nelson over the top of Acosta and in. Such a quick and crisp pass from Bryant Voiles to Kyle Nelson. This team has been playing together for quite some time. They know each other well, and they're still a young team at that. Kyle Nelson is one of only three seniors on this Augustana squad. They have risen to number three in the nation and are unbeaten at 18-0. Elmhurst will try to change that here. Acosta working against Dexter, leaning in short. It's tapped out of bounds, staying with the Blue Jays, eight to shoot. Foster inbounding to Robertson in front of the Augustana bench. Here's Foster with five to shoot. Spinning outside the lane, rimming out. And Kyle Nelson reels in the rebound. Augustana is perfect. Only eight teams in CCIW history have finished unbeaten in conference play. Augustana the last of those, and that was in 1973. So it has been quite some time, and certainly if there is a team who can do it, it is the Vikings who recorded a win over Illinois Wesleyan 69-67 on Wednesday. Well, that just goes to show, Tim, how tough the CCIW conference is. Only eight teams, Augustana being one of them, and the opportunity this season with the lineup, boy, that they have put together for this Vikings team, they definitely have a chance to be in that moment of history again. Boyd in the lane, long. Dexter rips away the board. DeSimone wants to lob. 2-0 Augustana. Rohrer on the baseline, rotates it around the arc. Dexter denied. Augustana trailed by 16 early in the ball game in their win over Illinois Wesleyan. Here's a third opportunity. And Troy Rohrer will make his way to the free throw line. Nelson with the initial miss, and then Voiles tapped at it as well. You may notice on the sideline, the coaches are all donning tennis shoes. Similar to their players. Every year at this time, it happens. Coaches versus cancer. Rohrer hits free throw number one. It's 3-0 Augustana. Troy Rohrer. 40% shooter this season at the line. And a second one drops in. One thing is for sure, the crowd is out in full force tonight. Absolutely, tons and tons of fans as you guys have a great view of the opposite side of what we're looking at here and is what is mostly Augustana fans following this undefeated team. There's a lot of Chicago area connections to this Augustana squad as well as Dornfeld is fouled. Brian DeSimone hails from Wheeling. He played at Buffalo Grove. Griffin Dwyer, who's on the bench, played at Hersey High School in Arlington Heights. Mike Avalone, a senior from Naperville. Kyle Nelson is from Deerfield. Luke Scarlata is from Berwyn. Cameron Norton from Downers Grove. Kevin Weibel is from Morton. And Brandon Coons from Lake Zurich. So a lot of Chicago area players for the Vikings as well. 4-0 Augustana lead. Foster passing on the three attempt. Opting to square it up for Boyd, who will dead on, rimming out. Nelson with a rebound. It's one and done. Elmhurst has to rebound if they want to have any chance at winning this ballgame today. Voiles will move with the left hand. First meeting saw Augustana win 67-45 on January 8th as Elmhurst was just 4 of 23 in the first half of play, being held to only 17 points. Joe Acosta with his first foul, second against the Blue Jays, and free throws upcoming for George Dexter. Augustana as a team, 68% from the line. Dexter is a 77% shooter. He is second on the squad, trailing only reserve Drew Kroger. Here's Chris Anderson out of Mount Carroll, Illinois, entering. And Dexter will have another here. The Blue Jays have yet to score in three minutes of the half, and it's now a 5-0 Augustana advantage. The Vikings this season 
are out-rebounding their opponents by over eight per game. Talked about the size advantage repeatedly. Elmhurst needs to rebound to have a chance to win. They haven't so far today. Acosta in the right corner and air ball from the land of three. Well, you mentioned the height being a major advantage for Augustana. I think that just adds to the fact that their rebound total is so entirely high. Right now on the floor, three guys over six foot seven feet tall. And now a couple of tall guys for Elmhurst coming in. But this Augustana team, Voiles at 6'9", Nelson at 6'9", and Dexter at 6'7", taking up a lot of space. Steve Crane in for the Blue Jays. He had been the starter in the post, 6'7", junior. Hometown product out of Elmhurst. Boyd is trapped and has no choice but to throw it away. It's tough when you find yourself surrounded by a pair of 6'9 players <laughs> who can stretch out the defense 45 feet away from the rack. Yeah, that can be a bit of a challenge especially for guys that don't have that height advantage necessarily, especially against this type of basketball team. Anderson takes to the hole and a goaltend is called. 7-0 Augustana, 16-14 to play in the first half. Deontay Foster working right. Robertson. Back to Schroeder. Boyd in front of the bench. 15 to shoot. Foster moving over to Schroeder. Three-pointer is good. The Blue Jays are on the board. It took four minutes and 13 seconds, but Elmhurst finally scores as they trail 7-3. to three. And Augustana quickly answers with Kyle Nelson again. Well, that's what they're going to do consistently throughout this game, Tim, is just answer anytime that we're able to celebrate maybe a three-point shot coming from Aaron Schroeder anything like that you've got to just remember to get back on defense immediately knowing that this team is going to want to answer well and in talking about the size advantage for Augustana in the post it almost forces you to shoot from the perimeter and the Blue Jays took a while to heat up from there as Robertson hits almost from behind the backboard on the baseline from 17 Elmhurst as a team shooting 34% from three-point range. And Steve Crane is whistled for his first foul. 34% sitting right in the middle of the CCIW, currently fourth. Those shots are going to have to drop for the Blue Jays today to have an opportunity. DeSimone at the line. 10-5 as he buries the free throw. Brian DeSimone, a 73% free throw shooter, 34 of 46. Augustana, a perfect 7-0 on the road, including 2-0 in the CCIW. They own road wins at North Park and at Carthage. The win at Carthage was a four-point victory, 58-54. The win at North Park was a 13-point decision, 62-49. So they have been tested this season as well. They played a relatively tough non-conference schedule. Wisconsin Stout, Wisconsin Whitewater, Buena Vista out of the Iowa Conference, always tough. Anderson, perennial NCAA tournament team. Washington University in St. Louis, likewise there. St. Norbert, a top 10 program. Chicago, always tough. 10 to shoot for Mike McCurdy, who's off the bench today and is 16-footer, rims to the right edge as Cam Norton chases down the board. Norton at 6-6. So a three-inch difference in Norton versus Voiles in the post. Vikings are so fluid offensively. Here's Drew Kroger, senior out of Geneseo, with 13 to shoot. Into the right corner for Nelson. He'll go cross-court for a spotting Norton. 15-footer rims out. Rohrer taps at the rebound. Rohrer keeps it alive, and Kroger chases it down. They're also tenacious, never giving up. Fluid is just a great word to describe the type of offense that they run in such a good rhythm here. Their pass is so tight, so strong, and great, great leads to the basket. Blue Jays by no means are able to, to let anything from this Augustana team get by them. Good defense for Crane, and Robertson pulls up in transition. 
Well, Elmhurst fell behind 7-0. But they have worked their way back into the ball game here with 13-20 to play in the half, down four. And McCurdy reaches in and collects a steal. It's a one on three. McCurdy will sling it out to Robertson, who was defended by Kroger. And now here's Schroeder at the left turn for three. You bet. All right. And a timeout for Augustana. It's always a good indication of what's going to happen in the ball game as to how often Gray Giovanni removes his sport coat. <laughs> and it took six minutes and 55 seconds for the 12th year Augustana coach to take off his suit coat here tonight. 11-10, August Santa with a lead as the Blue Jays have hit a pair of three-pointers in the ball game. Good idea there by Coach Mark Shear to call a timeout after knowing, hey, we've got a good chance here to kind of contain this team as best as we can. When you know a team is as good as this Vikings team is, coming into a game like tonight, you just know that you have to put it all on the floor. This 2-5 and five Blue Jay basketball team in the CCIW Conference is just hoping to compete against such a strong team in the Vikings. I know we're not yet seven minutes into the game, but the difference in the contest currently for Augustan has been second chance points. Yes. On those first couple of sequences up the floor, Elmers did a very good job of defending, but Augustan had just received opportunity after opportunity and was able to convert. It's a one-point edge. Rohrer. To Nelson handing back to Rohrer all by himself on the right edge, backing up with 10 to shoot. He'll drive into the lane and a no look bounce pass towards Coons, who is shooting. Charge the foul to Mike McCurdy, his first team foul, number four. Brandon Coons out of Lake Zurich shooting free throws. 2.7 points per ball game. Six foot seven sophomore as Bryant Voiles returns in the post. Another free throw upcoming, spinning, and it's loose. Coons fighting for it, and Boyd will end up scooping it ahead. Here's Crane in transition, going for the dunk, and he's fouled. Blue Jays going for the home run ball. Yeah. Not a bad idea there. Steve Crane had the momentum going up to try to get the slam to fall. But, you know, getting himself on the foul line regardless is, is a, you know, is a positive after a set like that. Luke Scarlata with a foul is first. Crane hitting free throw number one. He will have an opportunity to tie the score here with 12.31 to play. Crane, who didn't play at all last year after spending his first two years at Lewis University. Back with the Blue Jays this season. Tying the score at 12. DeSimone pulling up and a long three-pointer. Hits the front iron. Falls to the floor and Crane able to take it away from Rohrer. Foster looks to run. And he'll wisely slow it up into the corner. But what we're seeing is a Blue Jay team that's not willing to let up at all. A good take there by Steve Crane. But I like what I see in the effort, the toughness that we're seeing right off the bat, the physicality that this team is showing right now against, I mean, that's exactly what you have to do coming out against a team like the Vikings and the record that they've posted so far and the team that they've proven that they are. Now it's time to show for the Blue Jays to show what type of team they are. Well, one thing you cannot overcome in the post is foul trouble. And Steve Crane with his second, perhaps a frustration foul more than anything else. He wasn't in position for the rebound at all, and he heads to the bench as Dornfeld takes his place. And Brian Voyle shows he can shoot as well. The second leading scorer for the Vikings this season hits a three-pointer, and it's 15-12. Brian Voyles, the 6'9 junior out of Byron, Illinois. It's in my neck of the woods. Foster to answer. And Scarlata takes it away. Bryant Voiles with 31 three-pointers on the season leads Augustana. He's a 40% three-point shooter. Jump stop for Coons. Strong to the basket off the back iron. Acosta leaps in and Foster will slow it up. One thing Augustana is also very good at is getting back in transition. 
Here's Schroeder for three. He had hit his first two from the left edge, this time from the right side to no avail. 11 minutes to play in the half. De Simone to the hole, short. Acosta the rebound. Well, I don't think you couldn't be more right, Tim, on the fact that rebounds could be a key factor in this ball game between these two teams. And we've seen so far Elmhurst doing a good job under the basket, picking up big boards. Schroeder rotates for Foster, spotting up for three off the mark. Rohrer all the way to the basket. Looking for an open Coons over the top of Dornfeld. Attempted to use the backboard. Scarlotta the rebound, lost it. Here's McCurdy one-on-one -on -one against De Simone, Rotating and Voiles comes skying in out of nowhere and swats it away. Mark Shear was looking for a foul. And now he'll shed his coat and calling for a timeout. With 10.15 to play in the half. 15-12, August stand of the lead, a full timeout, and we break as well on Blue Jay TV. Ten fifteen to play in the half. August Santa 15, Elmhurst 12 in the CCIW Men's Basketball Contest. The Vikings are the leaders of the CCIW, 7-0. They own the tiebreaker over North Central, who sits in second at a surprising 5-2. So basically a three-game lead following the first go-round through the conference slate. Illinois Wesleyan, Wheaton, and Carthage tied with 4-3 and three marks. North Central, the surprise team of the conference thus far. And the Blue Jays sitting at two and five of the CCIW. Milliken is winless. Robertson, he'll try from the left turn, high off the back iron and over the top of the backboard. Well, we saw a good ball movement there, Tim, on that last set. And you mentioned something about outside shooting definitely going to having having to be an important part for this Blue Jay team tonight. But it is it does come down to making sure that those shots are the good shots that you want to take when giving the opportunity. But I couldn't agree with you more. The outside shooting is definitely something that the Blue Jays should focus on tonight. Just to give you an idea, Elmhurst has taken 16 shots in the ball game. They've also taken eight three-pointers. They are two of eight from three-point range, 25%. So I think that Augustana will be more than happy to have the Blue Jays continue to shoot from three-point range as George Dexter Works his way to the free throw line following the second foul against Joe Acosta. And the sixth against the Blue Jays. Free throw spins away. Full house at R.A. Fagginal Hall. Dexter's second toss is in. Four point Augustana advantage. 16-12 with 9.38 to play in the half. Robertson. He'll bring it across with Anderson on him defensively. And stepping in front is Dexter with a steal. Ahead to Anderson, streaking to the basket. Chris Anderson, a guy I can remember watching play in high school. He was a high profile player around my area from Mount Carroll. I'm coming from Dixon, Illinois, and we play that team uh, every season, and he was definitely the guy to watch. And showing there just why he is a part of this undefeated Augustana basketball team. Off the hip of George Dexter. 
stays with the Blue Jays, who promptly throw it away. DeSimone stepping in front of Boyd. DeSimone leading the break. With under nine minutes to play the half. Kyle Nelson has returned for the Vikings. He's up high, setting a screen on Boyd. Dexter lobbing for the aforementioned Nelson in the lane, working his way underneath Eric Dornfeld. Nice move. 20 to 12, as Augustana again begins to retake momentum in the ball game. Well, what we saw in that last defensive set, that you can only do so much to try to stop this Augustana team. They are so tough, so big, and they know what it means to win and what it takes to get there. 30-second timeout for Elmhurst. Augustana on an 8-0 run. First half of play here in Elmhurst tonight. So glad you're with us. Our next live video broadcast will come your way Friday. That's right, Friday, February 4th. A lot of people are wondering why on earth is Elmhurst playing on Friday against Illinois Wesleyan? Well, I will tell you the reason for that. Mid-year commencement here at R.A. Fagenal Hall will take up the weekend. Right before the season started, they had a couple of late chinks to the schedule. And they actually ended up switching the dates with Illinois Wesleyan and Elmhurst home and home. Elmhurst was supposed to host Illinois Wesleyan on January 16th, a Sunday. They couldn't play on a Saturday due to a wrestling meet here at R.A. Fagadal Hall. They switched that to being played on the Saturday at Illinois Wesleyan. Here's Voyles spotting up for three. Off the top of the backboard and Dornfeld controls. And then they changed dates with Elmhurst, but they couldn't play on a Saturday. And they couldn't play on a Sunday because of mid-year commencement as well. So they ended up moving it to Friday. And so we play on Friday night, our next broadcast here on Blue Jay TV against Illinois Wesleyan. 20 to 12 with 7.52 to play in the first half. Rohrer isolated on the right edge. Over the top of McCurdy, hit from 12. Wow. I mean, any opportunity that the Blue Jays get on offense, they have got to take control as best as they can. In the past couple of possessions, we've seen them just being kind of sloppy, but it's, it's beyond that. It's mostly just unable to get anything set up against this solid team. James Robertson will snap a 10-0 run with his first make from the land of three today. 22-15, DeSimone, meanwhile, sprinting ahead, collides with Eric Dornfeld, and Dornfeld is charged with his first foul. Well, DeSimone is definitely not afraid to show his speed on the floor. Driving up, kicking it to somebody down low in his team, but I mean, just a guy that really knows how to push the floor for this team. And now finding himself on the line for a couple of extra point opportunities. Simone hits the first free throw. Bonus time already. Seven fouls against Elmhurst. Just two fouls against the Vikings in the contest. Simone hits both free throws. He's four of four at the line today. And he will leave for Drew Kroger. Robertson sprinting ahead, leaves it for Acosta. Acosta with a left hand dribble, 15 to shoot. Dornfeld pops out. In the arms of Acosta again, picking up his dribble to Boyd. Corner right with eight to shoot. Here's Robertson leaning in the 19-footer. Ricochets to the left and chasing down the rebound is Cam Norton. Six thirty-three to play first half. In the lane, Kroger. Friendly roll, hit off the front iron and dropped in. The work ethic of this Vikings team is definitely undeniable. Just a team that comes out strong on every possession, and we've been seeing that 
over and over again here as they continue to make that margin of a lead even higher. Joe Acosta starting to move, using a screen from Dornfeld, back out to Boyd, and a lot of contact with Bryant Voiles. And Zach Boyd will be stepping to the line. Scratch that, it's on Scarlotta. Zach Boyd will step to the line. Second foul against Scarlotta. Zach Boyd shooting two. His first free throw attempt will not go. All kinds of subs for the Blue Jays. Mark Shear deep into his bench. Trying to go with something that works here as Eric Ellingson enters. Waiting to check in is Bailey Barnett. Crane is back in with two fouls. Aaron Schroeder is in the ball game as well as Boyd hits on the second attempt. Barnett will take his place on the floor. 10 point lead, 26 16, 558 first half. Other games today, if you're wondering, North Park was at Milliken this afternoon and won that ball game. Voiles spotting up in the right corner. Rebound to Foster, who trudges ahead. Barnett in front of the Augustana bench. Left hand dribble, nearly carried it. Almost there, almost a turnover by Bailey. Crane in the post, over the top of Scarlotta, rimming to the right. Roar of the board, a one on three. Will Roar take? He does, and it's an offensive foul. And Foster hit his head on the play. It is an offensive foul. Foster is collecting himself underneath the bucket. Troy Rohrer's first foul. He exits. Foster pretty banged up after that one. Mark Lots Shear of, wants to make sure he's okay. I don't blame him. Lots of collision on that last one there, Tim. Carthage at Illinois Wesleyan, North Central at Wheaton. The other games in the CCIW today. Ten point Augustana lead. Blue Jays will look to chip away. Barnett lost it, needs some help. Foster obliges. Five minutes to play. Ellingson in the right corner. Bouncing for Crane. Right of the glass, out to Ellingson. He'll move with the left hand. Skip it for Schroeder. Five to shoot, Ellingson for three, air ball. Out of bounds to Augustana. The Blue Jays shooting just 22% in the ball game thus far. Five of 22. Three of those have been from three point range. Brian Boyles. Drives in and drops it home. 28-16. Schroeder lobbing for Crane. Back out to Ellingson. Down the center of the lane and a whole lot of contact. Well, instead of what we've been seeing, a lot of cold shooting from the Blue Jays, maybe something to transition is, into is just to drive to the basket, hope for a foul really against this tough defensive team that we've seen out of the Vikings right now. We've just seen, I'm just in awe of their defense and kind of what the pressure, the type of pressure that they're putting on the Blue Jays right now. Senior Eric Ellingson at the line, first free throw drops in. Ellingson along with Aaron Schroeder, Joe Acosta, and Sean Fenley, the seniors on the Elmhurst squad. A lot of people have been wondering where Fenley has been. He's still out with a knee injury. Suffered right at the start of the CCIW season. The end of December during the Blue Jay Classic Tournament. Has not played in 2011. Ellingson hitting both free throws, 28-18. Nelson from nine, banks it in. 
so tough to defend. Less than four minutes to play in the half. 30 to 18. McCurdy backing up. McCurdy cutting towards the basket and Barnett throws it away. Ellingson does his best to save it, but he's about two steps behind it over and back. Deontay Foster, Zach Boyd return for the Blue Jays. Trail by 12 here in the first half. This will be a good time for a run. Augustana, a 10-0 run when the ball game was tied at 12. They have been in control since. DeSimone, wide open from bonus distance. And a foul on the rebound. George Dexter held up. Charge it to Aaron Schroeder. His first. And Dexter to shoot. I talked about the work ethic, Tim, of this Augustana team. I cannot imagine the type of practices that are run at their in Rock Island with this team that is really just absolutely dominating the CCIW conference and dominating anybody that comes in their way. Tough team to beat. Dexter is four of six at the free throw line. All four of his points have come from there today. 32-18, Augustana with the edge. Schroeder leaves it for Boyd along the baseline, trying to draw the contact against Voiles. Anderson fails to secure the rebound, and it's a fresh 35 for the Blue Jays. Crane, jump stop in the lane. Beautiful set play for the Blue Jays off of the inbounds. Foster to Crane. They've been very solid off of inbounds plays this year. 32-20. Glad you're with us on Blue Jay TV. A little bit behind schedule due to the double overtime women's ball game involving Elmhurst and Augustana earlier. Won by Augustana, 70-68. Deontay Foster with his first foul. The ninth against the Blue Jays. Brian Foyles with five points for the Vikings. He has yet to visit the free throw line today. As his first toss is off the front iron. 71% shooter on the season from the line for Augustana. The Vikings are also a very balanced squad. Only two players in double figures. Kyle Nelson and Brian Voyles. Today, Nelson with eight points is the leading scorer. And then Voyles now with five and four others with four. Voyles with six as he hits the second free throw. 13-point advantage. Robertson towards the corner for Boy. Two and a half to play in the first. Foster against De Simone looks for the cutting Schroeder and overshot him. Boy, the Blue Jays are just missing several wide open opportunities. They're getting those open cuts. They're just not being able to connect. Yeah, they're definitely there. The shots are there at times. But again, this Viking team has been doing a great job on defense and kind of almost having an expectation and knowing what's coming against this Blue Jay team. The third foul against Steve Crane. Not the player you want racking up fouls. Kyle Nelson leading all Augie scorers with eight. Now owns nine and Crane heads to the bench. We won't see him again here in the first half. It's Eric Dornfeld takes his spot. Well, if Crane could try to limit his fouls, a good thing to do for the Blue Jays could be to keep both the big guys in the lineup in Dornfeld and Crane. But unfortunately, in this first half, Crane picking up three fouls, coming to a major disappointment in Coach Mark Shear as he needed 
Ukraine to be on the floor as much as possible in tonight's game. Foster with 18 to shoot. And less than two minutes to play in the half. De Simone will come out and press. 10 to shoot for Boyd. Up the left side of the lane. Blocked by Nelson. Schroeder's second chance no. Ripping it away is Coons. And here come the Vikings again. In transition, Zach Boyd swats it away. 6-3 versus 6-9. Advantage 6-3 right, right there. You may not have expected the 6-3 advantage to come out on top, but Zach Boyd doing a great job being a scrappy player that he is and forcing the inbounds play. D. Simone, baseline left, hits the 18-footer. Can't leave Augustana open either. They are such good shooters. A 17-point advantage, 37 to 20. Remember, this was tied at 12. And from that point on, it has been a 25 to 8 run for Augustana. Dornfeld spinning, and De Simone steps right in, picks his pocket, and Dornfeld will be charged with his second foul. So that is three on Crane and two on Dornfeld. With 59.8 to play in the half, some more Augustana free throws. You've got to have guys like Dornfeld in the lineup just to try to control the height that Vi the Vikings bring to the floor and to be able to put a decent sized defender on guys that are six, seven or higher for the Vikings. So it's important that Guys like Dornfeld and Steve Crane are able to stay in this game and even stay eligible to be in the game by limiting their fouls. This will be the 20th free throw of the half for Augustana. Wow. They are 15 of 20 at the line. As De Simone splits the pair. 18 point edge for Augie with 54 seconds to play. Boyd, high left, three pointer off the back iron. Voiles with the rebound. De Simone looks up as he locates the open Roarer in the left corner. Roarer into the lane, drops in the 13-footer. Wow. Just a good, solid basketball team, Tim and Augustana. Just cannot deny their swift type of play that they come into games, just knowing that sense of confidence coming in with no losses, and by no means do they want to give up another one here tonight, and you can just see that fight in them all game long. Timeout Elmhurst, 30 second timeout, following the eighth turnover of the half for the Blue Jays. 24 and two tenths to play in the first. Elmhurst will have their work cut out for them in the second half, how quickly things turned here tonight. You look in at Mark Shear, chatting with his squad, 15th year head coach of the Blue Jays. Well, just at a, in a moment that when we thought the Blue Jays were kind of able to stick with this team the first, the first 10 minutes of the game, they were quite a scrappy team in a word that I used to describe the women's Augustana team as they fought and fought very hard against the Blue Jay team. But Augustana picking up on that little bit of momentum that Elmhurst had in that first 10 minutes and is not allowing anything else to come. A couple of youngsters down in front of us are having a hi-ho time, <laughs> dancing to all the music. Kind of distracting. I mean, I'm, I'm focused on them, too, a little bit. <laughs> it's all right. You <laughs> can get up and dance. Time. You can put your headset down and join them. I won't miss you for 10 seconds. <laughs> D. Simone to the corner with six seconds. Bounces for a wide open Nelson. He'll take to the hole and drop it in. With that, we head to the half. 42-20. Augustana with the lead, Gray Giovanni with a huge round of applause for his unbeaten Viking squad. Ranked number three in the nation, it has been all Augustana from about the eight minute mark on in as they lead by 22. 42-20 is the score. We will step aside here on Blue Jay TV when we return. We'll have first half numbers and analysis. We'll talk a little bit about the women's contest if you missed it. We'll also have the scores from elsewhere around the CCIW today. 42-20, Augie by 22 with the break. This is Blue Jay TV. I 
wasn't sure getting out of high school if I wanted to bowl in college, but after I graduated high school, I knew that there wasn't any way I was going to not be able to do it. So I'm glad that I came to Elmhurst because it gave me that chance. Last year was a good year, had the first winning record for the team. I really like being on the team. It brings a lot of people together and it makes it a lot easier to meet other people. We're with each other. 24-7 on the weekends when we have tournaments and like three days a week for practice. Some of us work out together, go to dinner together. It's just, it's nice having those close friends to always fall back on if you need something and they're always willing to help. Back on Blue Jay TV, Tim Calderwood alongside Gina Veneer. We are at halftime, Augustana leading 42 to 20 in a first half completely dominated by the Vikings. We'll run down some first half numbers for you in a few moments. But Gina, Elmhurst came out, fell behind 7-0, came storming back, played with the Vikings for a while. The contest was tied at 12, and then Augustana turned the corner, embarking on a 10-0 run and have not looked back since. Well, as I mentioned before in the broadcast in the first half, just Augustana picking up on the fact that, hey, this Elmhurst team is trying to stick with us and not letting that continue. Now with 22 points ahead as we start going into the second half. This is a team, Augustana had 15 points off of turnovers against the Blue Jays simply in the first half. So that's something that, of course, the Blue Jays are going to try to limit. But outside of that, this team is just so physically tough that it's so hard to tame them. Let's take a look at the other scores from around the CCIW. In action, first half in Wheaton. North Central leading 25 to 20. We mentioned the Cardinals, kind of one of the surprise stories of the CCIW, sitting at 5-2. and two. I would have to say that Augustana, honestly, is a surprise story. I don't think anybody expected them to be sitting 18-0 at this point in the season, their best start in school history. As we mentioned, a CCIW team has not gone unbeaten since Augustana did it, and that was way back in 1973. They finished 16-0. They certainly have a realistic shot, but they also have a lot of road games in the second half of the schedule. It's kind of weird how the CCIW schedule worked this season with teams kind of having a lot of home games in the first half and a lot of road games in the second or vice versa. In the case of Elmhurst, after today, the Blue Jays have only two home games remaining. They'll host Illinois Wesleyan on Friday, and then they'll host North Central on February 16th. Every other game will be on the road in the second half of the season. So it was kind of weird how the schedule worked out. Augustana has a lot of road tests remaining, but they certainly have a crack at finishing the CCIW season unbeaten. They are 7-0 and on their way to 8-0, leading by 22. So North Central leads Wheaton 25-22. Meanwhile, Illinois Wesleyan in a big home contest, leading Carthage 58-47. And we did have a final score for you from earlier today as North Park was victorious over Milliken down in Decatur. And as a result, the Big Blue remain winless in the College Conference of Illinois and Wisconsin. So we have a unbeaten team in Augustana and we have a winless team in Milliken following the 63-55 victory. Let's talk a little bit about the women's contest here earlier. Augustana ending Elmhurst's season best three game winning streak with a double overtime victory 70 to 68. The first win of the season for Augustana in the CCIW and a big, big blow to the Blue Jays in their quest to reach the top four and qualify for the CCIW tournament. Well, it was very evident that Coach Warner was completely disappointed in the fact that they couldn't pick up the home victory tonight against a team that was had no wins in the CCIW conference against Augustana. We saw a very exciting double overtime game just before the men's game, before all these fans trickled in to watch the boys take action. But the girls definitely put up a good fight, unfortunately not coming out on top for Elmhurst. Not one, but two chances for Elmhurst to win that game in regulation. Neither dropped in. It required double overtime, but Augustana posted the victory. Megan Nay, 15 points, 15 rebounds for Elmhurst, while Megan Merklin reeled in 23 points, which tied Augustana's Kristen Fox for a game high total. So that was the story in the women's contest. We mentioned the wrestling team. Well, the wrestlers finished eighth at Wheaton today with Mark Corsello at the heavyweight class winning the championship of the Pete Wilson invite. Meanwhile, the track teams have opened their indoor schedules today at Chicago. 
And as we mentioned during the women's broadcast, Gina, a softball player here at Elmhurst. Well, their season gets started tomorrow along with a baseball squad as well. No, they don't play for quite some time. And don't worry, they won't be playing in February here. They'll be playing down in Florida, and I will be one jealous guy. <laughs> but the spring sports are starting to get rolling a little bit as well here at Elmhurst College. So that is the story here on Blue Jay TV. We'll take a break when we return. First half numbers, 42-20. Augustana with the lead at the intermission. This is Blue Jay TV. I wasn't sure getting out of high school if I wanted to bowl in college, but after I graduated high school, I knew that there wasn't any way I was going to not be able to do it. So I'm glad that I came to Elmhurst because it gave me that chance. Last year was a good year, had the first winning record for the team. I really like being on the team. It brings a lot of people together and it makes it a lot easier to meet other people. We're with each other 24-7 on the weekends when we have tournaments and like three days a week for practice. Some of us work out together, go to dinner together. It's just, it's nice having those close friends to always fall back on if you need something and they're always willing to help. Back on the campus of Elmhurst College at R.A. Fagadal Hall, I'm Tim Caldwell alongside Gina Veneer. Augustana with a 42-20 lead at the break as the Vikings with some eye-popping numbers that we'll get to in just a moment. First to let you know, Elmhurst travels to Milliken on Wednesday, a 7.30 contest. We will not have audio or video for you from Decatur, but the Big Blue will have it available, so visit Milliken's website if you would like to follow the Blue Jays on Wednesday. We will be back on Friday as Elmhurst welcomes Illinois Wesleyan again in a contest forced to be played due to midterm graduation coming up this weekend on a Friday as a late swap in the schedule with Illinois Wesleyan switching the home dates. And the game was initially supposed to be played here in January on a Sunday following a wrestling meet on a Saturday which wouldn't allow it to be used, but they switched that date to being played in Bloomington, which is why they played on Saturday the 15th, and then coming to Elmhurst now, playing on a Friday, because graduation, mid-year commencement, will take out R.A. Fagadal Hall for both Saturday and Sunday. Let's take a look at those numbers that I alluded to in the first half. A couple of huge ones standing out. Number one, rebounding, 23-11 to 11 in favor of Augustana. The Vikings with seven second chance points, Elmhurst with only two. Here's an even bigger number for you. Points in the paint, 20 for Augustana, just two for Elmhurst. The Blue Jays shot just 23% in the first half, six of 26. They were three of 11 from three-point range. So in other words, half of their shots that fell in the first half came from three-point range, which is playing right into the hands of Augustana. They took almost half of their shots from three-point land as well. I think for Elmhurst to try to work their way back into this contest, they need to attack inside. Augustana, meanwhile, shot 20 free throws in the first half, 15 of 20. They were 48% from the floor, 13 of 27, and only one of five from three-point lanes, 20%. The Vikings will apply some pressure on the Blue Jays to inbound to begin the second half, trailing by 22. Elmhurst did not emerge from the locker room until very late in the break. So you know Mark Shear had some words with his squad as Troy Rohrer simply takes it away from Robertson. He has DeSimone trailing, but Rohrer takes himself instead. 44-20. Just a heads-up player, very aggressive, stripping the ball there away from the Blue Jays and taking advantage of that turnover. And his first start of the season for Augustana as well. Eight points now for Rohrer and an offensive foul against Joe Acosta. And that will be his third. Already a substitution for Elmhurst. James Robertson played 30 seconds and he leaves for Mike McCurdy. Ryan DeSimone leaves it for Voiles in the corner. Augustana with the starting five on the floor. DeSimone, Rohrer, Voiles, Nelson, and Dexter. DeSimone into the corner along the baseline, knocked away by McCurdy. 21 to shoot for the Vikings. Glad you are with us on Blue Jay TV. 
Again, we'll have live video for you. Friday, a doubleheader. Elmhurst and Illinois Wesleyan. Rohrer in the left corner. Into the lane. Jump stop. Lost the basketball. It's taken away by McCurdy. McCurdy looking to attack. And Rohrer from behind knocks it away. Officials for this one, Gerald Morrow, Dave Lanning, and Jeff Pearson. Just underway in the second half. Augustana looking to remain unbeaten. They are 18-0 entering play today, their best start in school history. Ranked number three in the nation. Boyd spinning, leaving for McCurdy. Out it comes with 15 to shoot. Dornfeld in the lane. Out towards McCurdy, backing up, picking up his dribble. Ten to shoot. Dornfeld pops out. He'll set a screen for McCurdy with five to shoot. It was foul. Not the time you want to be committing a foul if you're Kyle Nelson. Nelson with 12 points in the first half to lead all scorers. It is his second foul. Elmhurst was led by James Robertson's seven first half points. Blue Jays stuck on 20. Remember, it took them four and a half minutes to score to begin the ball game as Deontay Foster ends a brief minute and a half spell with a three-pointer here. It is the fourth three of the game for the Blue Jays. Nice no-look feed for Nelson. He's contacted hard. If it's on Acosta, that is four, and it is. Joe Acosta's fourth foul. Foul trouble definitely plaguing the Blue Jays amongst other things in this battle here against Augustana. But Deontay Foster taking up the nice, long, deep three-point shot there and making at least one of those three-point attempts fall for the Blue Jays. But, boy, just a tough battle in and out for these two teams, especially the, the Blue Jays who are just simply trying to come out here and control in the second half. Kyle Nelson now 4 of 4 at the free throw line, 14 points to lead Augustana. 18-13 to play. A 23-point advantage for the Vikings who are doubling up the Blue Jays on the board. 46-23. Foster, corner left, high to McCurdy. He'll drive down the center of the lane, leave it for Dornfeld and an offensive foul. Probably a situation where McCurdy should have taken himself. Dornfeld almost seemed surprised that he had the ball in his hands. And an offensive foul against McCurdy, his second. Here comes Acosta to challenge DeSimone, who spins away. By no means does Joe Acosta want to be overly aggressive at this point in the game. But he's just trying to do his part to, again, like I said, contain this tough team. Nelson is double teamed. He'll drop it off for DeSimone, who resets with 15 to shoot. Down to 10 for the Vikings. Rohrer for the cutting, DeSimone. 48-23. Acosta high right towards McCurdy. Here's Dornfeld outside the paint. One dribble, hands off to Foster. He'll try the left edge. Looking for Boyd, who has been very quiet today. Zach Boyd in the first half with only one point. Dornfeld will head to the basket and he'll drop it in, plus a free throw to come. Zach Boyd, the leading scorer for Elmhurst this season at 15 points per ball game. But he has only one point in the contest today. Eric Dornfeld with one shot. His first visit to the line today, 66% on the year, 14 of 21. And his free throws off the front iron. Nelson and Boyd tangle for the rebound. It's off Nelson. I think if you're Elmhurst, you just try to slowly chip away at this lead and see what you can do. Absolutely. That's the only thing you can is as long as you're getting open opportunities for shots and the inbounds play going to Zach Boyd, you just got to keep fighting and, and try and hoping that, that at least a few of them will fall just to kind of cut the margin here. Voyles blocked the shot. And he has the basketball on his right hip as he starts to move. Cam Norton is checked in. Anderson outside the lane. Foster forces him into an air ball. It's off the foot of Dornfeld. And Augustana with nine to shoot retains possession. A 
lob into the lane. Give and go. Voyles wow. lob to Nelson, who just touched past it back to him. Well, you can just tell kind of the vibe that Augustana has brought into tonight's game. This season has probably just been an absolute blast for the Vikings, their fans, the coaches, the players, everybody involved in this undefeated team. They have just shown so much this season already. Steve Crane with three fouls, replaces Dornfeld in the post. Aaron Schroeder will replace Joe Acosta's four fouls on the floor. Schroeder hit a couple of early three-pointers, keying Elmhurst's comeback from an early 7-0 deficit. Schroeder hit two three-pointers, and the Blue Jays had the ball game tied up at 12. Here's Boyd for three. Zach Boyd with a three-pointer for the Blue Jays. Augustana with a 10-0 run after the game was tied at 12. And they have not trailed from that point on. And a quick shot playing into the hand of the Blue Jays. Boyd nearly lost the basketball, able to recover. Elmhurst had numbers if they hurry. McCurdy looking for help out to Foster. He'll trudge down Main Street, pull up from 13. Nope, but Boyd is there with an offensive rebound. The Blue Jays aren't giving up here. With 15 and a half to play and a hold called underneath against Nelson. He's none too pleased. Turns his back on the referee right away. It's the third foul charged to Kyle Nelson. And he will exit. Krogert and Scarlata returning for the Vikings. First appearances of the second half. Crane in the left corner with the ball above his head. Leading McCurdy. Now it is Foster bouncing for Crane. Out to Boyd, spotting up. Voyles on him defensively. Boyd adjusts, tries the 19-footer. Off to the left, collecting the rebound is Anderson. Vikings moving it around the arc like a weave practice drill. Norton surrounded underneath, steps out of bounds as his shot was blocked by Crane. He recovered, but his foot was out of bounds. Gray Giovanni coaching as if his team were down 22 rather than up 22. Very heated. That's nothing new for the Augustana bench boss. He expects the most out of his players every minute of every game that they're on the floor. And that's very refreshing to see such passion coming out of coaches. No matter what the lead is and no matter the record that you may come in to a ball game with, just the fact that this guy is still fired up about this team that is up by a lot right now in the second half here against the Blue Jays. But it's just very, very respectful to see that. 14-40 remaining. Kroger over to Anderson. And he targets Scarlotta as it's knocked away. Oh, we had a couple of youngsters dancing in front of us in the first half. Now we've had a youngster who's escaped into our roped off camera zone. <laughs> a little rebel, huh? Is that your best Billy Idol impersonation? <laughs> Anderson losing the basketball over to Rohrer. Get it with a rebel yell. Kroger pushed. 14-19 to play. The foul is against McCurdy, his third. In the midnight hour, she <laughs> cried more, more, more. <laughs> Kroger ready to inbound for the Vikings. To Scarlotta, who is surrounded, and an offensive foul. Scarlotta did not give the Vikings very many productive minutes in the first half, and Gray Giovanni screaming for a timeout. A 30-second timeout for Augustana. We keep it here. 50-28, the third-ranked Vikings on top in Elmhurst this evening. There is the head coach of the Vikings chatting with his squad. I'm Tim Caldwell alongside Gina Veneer here on Blue Jay TV. And again, Friday, our next broadcast here on Blue Jay TV. Doubleheader, men's and women's 5 and 7.30 against Illinois Wesleyan. In a couple of big contests, Elmhurst women will look to rebound following the double overtime loss today. 
Illinois Wesleyan very much in a fight for the second slot in the CCIW currently. They are up by four at home against Carthage with two and a half minutes to play. Robertson nearly loses the basketball. Bailey Barnett has entered. Barnett will try the right side. Tied it in a foul. Barnett, the sophomore out of Gary, Indiana to the hole. Charge the foul to Troy Rohrer, his second. It is the sixth against Augustana. And Bailey Barnett is at the free throw line where the Blue Jays visited six times in the first half. Barnett doing his part to try to cut this lead as best as they can. Down by 20 here with a little under 14 minutes to play. Boy, it's, it's tough to just continue to fight as hard as you can against this team that is, is just so tough to beat. Chris Anderson, one of the reasons why this team is such a challenge. Fourth against McCurdy. So Acosta with four fouls. McCurdy now with four fouls for the Blue Jays. Crane has three. And Chris Anderson at the line, spinning out his first free throw attempt. Anderson did not visit the line in the first half. On the season, he's a 72% shooter. And McCurdy heads to the bench with four fouls. Foster will take his place. One more toss upcoming for the junior out of Mount Carroll. Averaging a hair under double figures. 9.8 points per ball game. He hits the second free throw. Five points today for Anderson. A 21 point edge for the Vikings, 51-30. Barnett fakes right, moves left. Finds Robertson with 15 to shoot, backing up. Barnett in the left corner. Moving along the baseline, blocked by Scarlotta. Luke Scarlotta out of Berwyn, played at Morton High School. Won a championship in the Proviso West Holiday Tournament a couple of years ago with Raul Guzman, who currently plays for Carthage. They were teammates together. Steve Crane, counted at a foul. Strong move from Crane. Blue Jay fans like it. There are quite a few in the house, in addition to the vast array of fans assembled across the way. Easily the best attendance of the season here at R.A. Fagadal Hall is Steve Crane. Will look to bring the Blue Jays within 18. And it's off the back iron. 51-30 to the score with 13-13 to play. Well, Blue Jay fans are certainly cheering in any efforts by the Blue Jays and any action that, that they're putting up as they just want to see this team compete as best as possible. If you want to go back and watch any broadcast on Blue Jay TV throughout the season, you can do so through the Elmhurst TV YouTube page. They are all archived within a day of the contest concluding, a 30-second timeout for Elmhurst, but they are out of 30s. It will revert to a full with 13-11 remaining in the ball game and Augustana leading by 19. So again, any broadcast, including this one, if you want to go back and watch it again, you can do so through the... Elmhurst TV YouTube page. 13-11 to play. August stand by 19 and a timeout on the floor as we break. This is Blue Jay TV. It's been great. I've been able to achieve some of my goals I've set for myself. And I guess coming to a smaller school in wrestling, I got to be able to start right away and wrestle every year so far. Coming here and be able to compete right away is, is great. Since coming here, in wrestling, I've, I'm a three-time All-American. Uh, I won a national championship this year, went undefeated. Two-time conference champion, uh, conference outstanding wrestler this year. Me and Coach Marinette are pretty close. Uh, I go in there all the time and talk to him, not just about wrestling. And since coming here, I've been able to like relate closer to like my team and the coaches and stuff. For our producer, director, Glenn, and our entire staff here at R.A. Fagadal Hall, thanks so much 
for watching us this evening. I'm Tim Calderwood alongside Gina Veneer. Down to 13-11 to play. And Elmhurst certainly isn't giving up. Down only 19, 51-32. I say only 19 because Augustana jumped out to a 22-point advantage and has led throughout past about the midway point of the first half. But the Blue Jays are still playing defense, still fighting hard and not giving up in the ball game. They nearly record a steal here with 18 to shoot. DeSimone resets for the Vikings. He works it to Roar, back to DeSimone. Looking to drive. Bouncing for Roar again on the right edge. Under 10 to shoot. Here's Voiles for three. Short. Deontay Foster with a rebound. Voiles a 40% three-point shooter on the season. Hit a three early in the ball game as part of the 10-0 Vikings run that put them in front. That was when the score was tied at 12. Crane, an entry pass from Schroeder up and in. Almost completely behind the backboard. Steve Crane comes up and around. Put two points on the board now. But yes, you mentioned only as being kind of something that, I mean, any time you can get down against this, this, this Augustana team and try your best to continue to, to push back and forth against them, you've got to give a respectful effort and, and pat on the back for the Blue Jays team to continue to fight throughout this game. Crane went for the steal, and Nelson had an easy layup. Here's Robertson. He was open, driving instead to Crane inside the free throw line, hitting from 14. Well, Steve Crane has been a big reason why the Blue Jays have trimmed this lead down to 17. Mark Shear will send five fresh bodies to the scorer's table, however. With 11.35 remaining, Voiles with the ball in his hand, up the right edge of the lane, contact with Crane, and it is the fourth foul against Steve Crane. So he has four. McCurdy has four, and Acosta with four fouls as well. Bryant Voiles at the line for Augustana. Augustana has been at the free throw line countless times tonight. Blue Jays. 24, that's the exact count. Just, yeah, I mean, and that just goes to show that this Blue Jays team is doing their best. They're being a little bit over aggressive, which is exactly what you have to do coming into a ball game like this one, but. Unfortunately for the Blue Jays, Augustana converting all, mostly all of the free throws to extra points for their team. They are now 19 of 25 of the line, 76%. So 20 of the points on the board for Augustana now have come from the free throw line. Not quite half of their total, but close to it. Dornfeld with his back to the bucket. Nelson on him defensively. He wants somebody to come get the basketball. Finally, the McCurdy rises to the call. Dornfeld again will hand off to Ellingson. Set a screen. Ellingson rolls to the bucket. Right-handed layup short. Nelson with the rebound. DeSimone away. Augustana taking their time. And they can with a 17-point lead or 19-point lead now. And Nelson's attempt is short. Rebound knocked out of bounds, staying with the Vikings. Fifty-five, thirty-six. Deontay Foster will return for the Blue Jays as he takes the slot of Eric Ellingson. Foster only putting up three points tonight thus far with the lone three-point shot, but he had an excellent game against North Central, a career-high 17-point performance coming out of Deontay Foster. That one, of course, again, a loss to North Central, but Foster has definitely done a good job as a sophomore this year to find a lot of playing time. Zach Boyd commits the foul. Augustana having to reset after their attempt at something we saw earlier didn't work. The little give and go off of the inbounds pass between Nelson and Voiles. George Dexter is at the line. All of his points have come from the free throw line today where he is now five of seven. Dexter starting for the Vikings today, his 14th start of the season. Second free throw short. Who wants the rebound? It is Dornfeld. Acosta is on the floor with four fouls. Likewise for McCurdy as Acosta takes to the rack. No, Dornfeld taps at the rebound. Dexter controls weak side. Here's Voiles to the basket. Oh, man. Basically a handoff from Simone and Voiles showcased his speed as well. A 22-point lead for Augustana just like that, matching their largest of the game. 58-36. Blue Jays had trimmed it to 17. The 
Vikings have come charging back as well. Acosta along the baseline. Rohrer to the floor with 12 to shoot. Robertson and Barnett returning for the Blue Jays along with Crane. So now three players for the Blue Jays, four fouls. Crane, Acosta, and McCurdy. Well, Crane okay. is the only one on the floor currently. Just kind of thinking to myself over here, Coach Shear has just been able to move in and out players, trying to find the right formula, and he's still working on the sidelines, which is nice to see, but just trying to mix guys in and out of this game to see what they can do against this team. Steve Crane banks home a bucket. He is the only Elmhurst player in double figures, now with 12. Wide open in the left corner is Anderson. He'll try the three, and the rebound is tapped free. Rohrer fighting, falling to the floor. The ball ends up in the Augustana bench, and a foul against Bailey Barnett. 9.45 to play in Elmhurst tonight. Illinois Wesleyan and Carthage are headed for overtime. Sean Johnson missed a three-pointer that would have won the ball game after Carthage tied the contest on a tip-in for Mitch Thompson with one second to play. Zach Boyd, shy of the right elbow, tries the 15-footer, spins away. Nelson controls the rebound and he will slow it up. Kyle Nelson with his fifth rebound of the ball game. Averaging just under six per game, so right around his season average. Looking to bounce it towards Coons in the post. Here's Rohrer along the left baseline, and he's fouled by Boyd. Second on Boyd. Troy Rohrer shooting again. Augustana will cross the 30 free throw mark in the game with these attempts from Rohrer. First free throw is good. Bailey Barnett collects the miss. And the jumper is good for the Blue Jays. Kroger to Rohrer, baseline left. He'll go court wide for the wide open Anderson, whose three-pointer rims away. And Deontay Foster with control of the rebound. Boyd losing the basketball along the baseline, out of bounds to Augustana. Blue Jays have two timeouts remaining, Augustana with four. Mark Shear, coaching as always, pleading for a foul call. And the Blue Jays down 19. Elmhurst will try a little bit of a zone here, it looks like. Ah, a very brief zone look. To the elbow for Coons, who tries the 15-footer. They'll go wide open, Scarlotta underneath. His first deuce. Well, what's nice to see, at least on the sidelines for me, Tim, is just that, that both coaches in their tenures and in their individual teams, but just both of them, regardless of the store, score, being very into this game. Giovanni is 12th year here at Augustana, posted so far at 217 and 89 career record as Steve Crane takes that one and a timeout called. But both coaches still very passionate into this game, and I, I really like seeing that. 14 points for Steve Crane leading the Blue Jays as Elmhurst spends one of those two timeouts left. 7.48 to play. Augie by 19. 61-42 as we step aside. This is Blue Jay TV. had a great experience at Elmhurst. I really have. I think that the college is all about making the individual like well-rounded. And uh, I do think that I have 
grown up a lot since I've been at college. I played soccer and I'm in the nursing program. Kind of everything just fell together. The team was just so like nice and welcome. My freshman year we went to Brazil for preseason and that was like the coolest thing ever. So it was just our team. We stayed at this big um, like soccer resort and there was like all these fields and all these little kids playing and then we just had our own field and we, we played against different Brazilian teams. It's been great and I've made so many new friends. The soccer aspect, I think that I've kind of got a family there and I just love it. Seven forty-eight to go at Elmhurst. Augustana 61, Elmhurst 42. The game was tied at 12-12 before a 10-0 Augustana run. Put the unbeaten Vikings in control. And they have led ever since, up 22 at the half and up 19 currently. The Blue Jays do show zone. And they challenge Brandon Coons as the ball is poked away. The zone trying to take away the inside game. And Force the Vikings to beat him from the outside. Kroger says, I can try that, and he does. Drew Kroger, a senior out of Geneseo, hitting a three-pointer at the left turn. And the lead is again 22. It's 64-42. Kroger's ninth three-pointer of the season and his first this evening. Augustana's second three-pointer of the ball game. Zach Boyd's shot is blocked. Ducking underneath is Voiles, leading a three-on-two. Krogert will slow it up. 6.55 to play. Well, it's simply just hard for this Blue Jay team to get anything going on offense with the height and, and the aggressive play out of the Vikings team. Their defense is incredible, and, of, of course, we're seeing a lot of smoothness out of their offense, too. 22-point lead they're comfortably sitting on right now. Krogert attacks the zone right into the middle, throws it away. Drew the defenders in, looking for an opening in the zone defense. The Blue Jays have shown zone a few times this year. Kroger face guarding Foster. And McCurdy will walk it ahead. McCurdy on the floor with four fouls. Likewise for Steve Crane in the post, who is calling for the basketball as he works against Scarlotta. Clears out to Boyd, triggers a three-pointer short. Scarlotta out leaps McCurdy for the rebound. Here come the Vikings. Boyles plows over the top of Foster, an offensive foul. Six thirteen to play. Troy Rohrer will return for the Vikings. Sixty-four forty-two in favor of Augustana. Looking for what would be their third road victory of the CCIW slate. The Vikings still have road dates with Wheaton, Milliken, North Central, and Illinois Wesleyan on the schedule. Boyd high left with Rohrer's hand in his face. Locates Crane driving to the basket. Contact. And Steve Crane will be shooting free throws. Luke Scarlotta with the foul. That is his fourth. He's the first Augustana player with four fouls. Steve Crane, 14 points. He's the leading scorer for the Blue Jays. Kyle Nelson leading Augustana with 16, a game high total, and Crane's free throw is short. Again, our next broadcast on Blue Jay TV Friday. Elmhurst and Illinois Wesleyan here at RA Fagadal Hall. Mid-year commencement over the weekend. Moves that game to Friday. Crane hits the second free throw, 64-43, he'll leave. Dornfeld takes his place. Eric Dornfeld, the sophomore out of Geneseo, back in. Teammate of Drew Kroger down at Geneseo High School. Blue Jays extending the 2-3 zone a little bit. They'll come out to challenge the perimeter. And it leads to an open Cameron Norton, who slings it out to Kroger. Hit a three moments ago, spinning away. Rohrer rips it away. Another opportunity for the Vikings, who have been dominant on the glass today. Absolutely have been. Boy, the, just the swift mu movement of the ball on offense. Their offensive sets have been so strong and powerful. And the rebound coming and second advantage here. And now a foul called. But this game looks very similar to 
the CCIW matchup between Augustana and Elmhurst. The last time these two teams played when Augustana beat Elmhurst 67 to 45, excuse me. Blue Jays shooting four of 23. Held only to 17 points in the opening half of that game, but just a struggle overall any for any team really that has to, to come against the Vikings team. But Elmhurst doing their part and just trying to stay aggressive and Coach Shear working over there trying to find different ways to, to stay in this game. Luke Scarlotta, 71% shooter on the season, hits both free throws. A 23-point lead for Augie is their biggest of the game, 66-43. Augustana is plus 14 on the glass today, 37 to 23. 520 remaining in the contest. Foster in the right corner. High to Barnett, back to Foster. Driving the left edge, a runner, which falls in from 10 feet away. Deontay Foster trying to carry over some momentum from his performance at North Central on Wednesday. He received the start today. Five points for Foster, and Augustana throws it away. Foster, McCurdy, Barnett, Dornfeld, and Boyd for the Blue Jays. Coons, Norton, Anderson, Kroger, and Rohrer for Augustana with 4.45 to play. Boyd along the right baseline. Shoots it across for McCurdy, too hot to handle. Next to the water cooler, rolling out of bounds into the cheerleaders. And starting to clear his bench is Gray Giovanni, Sean Finn with his first appearance of the day. Anderson, cross court pass. Leaves it for Coons along the baseline. Likings a play catch around the perimeter. Rohrer, a head fake. Picks up his dribble at the left elbow and along the left baseline it goes for Norton. 16 footer is no good, but another rebound for Troy Rohrer. And he is quickly fouled. Some of the fans will start to make their way towards the exits here at RA Fagginal Hall. Rohrer with his sixth rebound of the ball game. Starting for the first time this season. He is one point away from double figures. Nine in the contest. Three of five at the line. The fourth foul against Zach Boyd. Off the back iron for Roar. It's really remarkable that no Elmhurst player has fouled out of this contest. They yes. now have four players with four fouls. And we're seeing Steve Crane check back into this game. But you're right, they started off with lots of fouls for the Blue Jay team being over aggressive. But... Everybody's sticking in this game. A little over four minutes to play and rounding it out together. Rohrer has reached double figures. Enter Eric Safranski off the Augustana bench. Now looking at the upcoming games here for Elmhurst Milliken on February 2nd, followed by the game that you keep mentioning, just the fact that we're going to be broadcasting next Friday here against Illinois Wesleyan. But things just don't get much easier, hope, hoping that they can grab a win against Milliken as they are right underneath Elmhurst in the CCIW standings. Barnett leans in. He tries the 12-footer. Boyd taps at the rebound, a second attempt. And chasing it down is Safranski, who falls to the floor, and a foul against Elmhurst. It is on Barnett. Second to Barnett. Free throws upcoming for Eric Safranski. Junior out of Mark, Illinois. He's averaging under a point per game. Safranski this year has registered just three points, none of which have been at the foul line. He changes that here. This is the 10th appearance of the season for Safranski. As the free throw is good, he has two points. 69-45. With under four minutes to play in the ball game. Foster, wing right. Working against Finn, backs it up.
Foster saves it from ending in the arms of Mark Shear and quickly throws it away. And Steve Crane tangling with Coons. If Crane is charged with the foul, which he is, he is done. Five fouls for Crane. He is the first Elmhurst player to foul out and he leaves with an Elmhurst best 15 points off of the bench today. Nice pat on the back for Mark Shear. He's the only Elmhurst player in double figures. James Robertson with nine. Brandon Coons to the line. Augustana has visited the free throw line 37 times today. Coons one of two. Scarlata returns. Scarlata taps at the miss. Coons with a third opportunity. And with 3.09 to play, the Blue Jays have the ball. Down 69-45. Dorn fell with his back to the bucket. Targets Robertson. Gunning for the steal was Griffin Dwyer. Jump stop for Foster. Looks for the cutting McCurdy. Blocked by Scarlata with authority. A lot of block shots here for the Vikings in this game. Any chance I feel like Elmhurst has any sort of opportunity, El Augustana just smushes the opportunity by either a block, a turnover. And a foul will be called against Eric Safransky. Double overtime in Bloomington tonight. 88 all between Carthage and Illinois Wesleyan. A double overtime in the women's game here between Elmhurst and Augustana. One by Augustana, 70-68. As McCurdy converts on the first free throw. Meanwhile, the other score currently going on. North Central up by 11 at Wheaton looking to sweep the season series, 60-49. McCurdy hits both free throws, and Mark Shear will use a timeout. With 2.46 to play, we'll step aside. 69-47, Augustana with the advantage. This is Blue Jay TV. Highlights, I'd probably say being on the tennis team is, is the first one. I get along with the guys really well. We just got back from our spring break trip in Hilton Head. That was really fun. It was good team bonding. Uh, a lot of people are friendly. I haven't met too many non-friendly people, I'd say. Everybody's pretty welcoming. The life around here, I'd say, is pretty good. I have a job off campus. I teach tennis for kids. My coach helped me out with it. Uh, he worked there when he was in high school. I mean, I try to do as much as I can while I'm here. Down to 2.46 to play on this Saturday night. Glad you're with us on Blue Jay TV. Tim Calderwood alongside Gina Veneer this evening. Elmhurst trailing in the contest. They came out early, fell behind to Augustana, rallied even the score at 12, and it has been the Augustana show since. Gray Giovanni is beginning to clear his bench. Mark Shear has used a combination of players, trying to get something across here in the final moments of the ball game, spending what is their final time out of the game here as well, down on the board by 22. It's 69-47. Augustana, number three in the nation. 18-0, their best start in school history. On the verge of becoming 19-0 here tonight. Outside the lane and throwing it away is Brandon Coons. He had Calcagno among others. Foster, Robertson, Dornfeld, Acosta, and Schroeder, the five for Elmhurst with 2.20 to play. Robertson high for Acosta. Dornfeld to the left edge. He'll utilize the screen for Robertson who steps back with 15 to shoot into the corner Schroeder. Driving baseline, pulling up short, may have been blocked by Scarlata. Acosta, his attempt was blocked. And on the third try for the Blue Jays, a foul. 
They'll wave off the basket and charge the foul to Griffin Dwyer. It is Dwyer, Coons, Scarlotta, Safransky, and Calcagno for Augustana. Mark Shear has written something on his whiteboard and he's pointing to it for the players. No, it's not the UPS commercial. <laughs> As the free throw is off the back iron. Can you read it from here, Gina? Yeah, My it looks like he's just pointing out who is going to have what player on defense. At least okay. that's kind of what I picked up. My, my vision is not that clear. I have 2060 vision or something like that <laughs> rather than 2020. I cannot see through walls. Banking home a shot is Calcagno. 71-49 with 137 to play. Acosta. Using Dornfeld as a shield, swings left for Schroeder. He'll try the three off the back iron, and Calcagno controls the rebound. Down to 120 to play. Scarlotta against Dornfeld, working his way in and dropping it home. Just a push throughout the entire game we've seen from this Vikings team, just consistently pushing the Elmhurst team until there's literally nothing left in the tank for these guys. Physically, mentally tough, coming in and knowing that they just wanted to come dominate against this team. And Elmhurst having a tough time putting up a fight against this one. Under a minute to play, 73-49. Augustana with the advantage. Griffin Dwyer with a right-hand dribble. They'll work it around the arc to the right side. Robertson on him defensively, knocking the basketball away with 36 seconds to play. 15 to shoot. In the lane for Scarlotta, tied up jump ball. Augustana retains possession and further into the bench digs Gray Giovanni. Kevin Wobble and Mike Avalone enter for Augustana. While Rich Thomas will appear for Elmhurst. Thirteen to shoot for the Vikings. All of the players who just entered will receive one minute of playing time credited in the box score. Three-pointer for Safransky in the left corner. Offensive rebound for Wobble in the lane. Acosta lost the handle. And with 17 seconds in Augustana with the basketball, the shot clock is off. The Vikings will likely hold for the final shot. Or hold, the, run out the clock, I should say. The Augustana regulars rise to their feet on the bench. Instead, it'll be a three for Avalone for the right corner to no avail. Rebound for Safransky falling out of bounds, and Acosta just swats at the basketball. It ends up four rows into the seats, and the final count, Augustana 73, Elmhurst 49. The Vikings are 19-0. Elmhurst is 7-12. The Blue Jays drop to 2-6 and six in the CCIW, and Augustana is now 8-0. Wrap it up in moments. This is Blue Jay TV. We're actually really good this year. There's 23 of us on the team, so it's quite a large team. We were close friends. A lot of the teammates lived together with other teammates. In high school, I wasn't like the most organized person because sports were just kind of like a side note in high school. Here, you know, you have to really balance yourself. Division three, it's more academics first, softball second. So our coach really strives on the academic portion of the school. And I mean, just like yesterday, we had a game. I went to class and came late to the game instead, but the game was canceled, luckily. <laughs> like softballs really kind of taught me some organization skills, I guess. 
I've had a great experience at Elmhurst, I really have. I think that the college is all about making the individual like well-rounded, and uh, I do think that I have grown up a lot since I've been at college. I've played soccer, and I'm in the nursing program. Kind of everything just fell together. The team was just so like nice and welcome. My freshman year, we went to Brazil for preseason, and that was like the coolest thing ever. So it was just our team. We stayed at this big um, like soccer resort, and there was like all these fields and all these little kids playing and then we just had our own field and we, we played against different Brazilian teams. It's been great and I've made so many new friends. The soccer aspect, I think that I've kind of got a family there and I just love it. It's tough trying to balance homework and practice, but I feel like our coaches stress academics to a point where you have to succeed. I'm actually a hometown kid. I grew up in Elmhurst. When the football team approached me, it was kind of like a lock, you know? I get to go to school in my hometown, play football. When you get to play something that you love, along with getting that education, it's priceless. Coming here, I was just surprised at um, how close everybody is on campus. I know pretty much everybody in terms of athletics on the campus. You will not want to leave this place come senior year. I'm going to live up this last year that I got for everything that's worth. 73-49, final score, Augustana over Elmhurst this evening here at R.A. Fagenal Hall. We've got Gina Veneer standing by with the head coach of the Blue Jays, Mark Shear. Blue Jays men's basketball coach Mark Shear and coach, simply put, every time anybody in the CCIW is going to face this Augustana team, it's going to be a tough one. They are. They're a very good team, and we have to give them a lot of credit. Uh, they played a great first half and, and kind of got us out of our game a little bit. We were hanging around about 12 down, Gina, Gina, and I was pleased with how we were playing. But they get teams to panic and do things that they wouldn't normally do. And that's what we did about the last two or three minutes of the game, which really made it about a 20-point spread. And then we got our composure and basically played them even the second half. But, you know, you can't have those lapses, and that's with our young team what we're working on. Coach, though it was a tough loss, what can you take away from a game like tonight's? I think our players have to learn that we have to stay within our game plan and just can't panic, you know, and have to take concentrate on each, each possession and doing a good job with each possession and letting the chips fall as far as winning and losing. Well, good luck throughout the rest of the tournament here in the CCIW. Thanks again, Coach, for taking the time with us. 73-49, the final score. Elmhurst falling to August Santa today here on Blue Jay TV as the Blue Jays drop to 7-12 and 2-6 and and in the CCIW. August Santa, meanwhile, remains unbeaten. The Vikings are 19-0 as they score the victory here in this one. Some stats that stand out. August Santa visited the free throw line 39 times. They were 27 of 39 at the line, and they out-rebounded Elmhurst 45-27 in the contest. Steve Crane led the Blue Jays with 15 points off of the bench today as he put up a solid showing and was the only player to reach double figures. James Robertson finishes with nine. Zach Boyd only four points, well below his average. Augustana's Kyle Nelson, a game-high 16 points. Bryant Voiles with 12, and Troy Rohrer 10 as the Vikings post the victory here at R.A. Fagenal Hall tonight. So with that, we say fare thee well. Augustana records the win. The Vikings are now 19-0, and they begin the second go-round through the CCIW like they did to every team in the first go-round with a win. 73-49 is the final score for my partner Gina Veneer. And for our entire Blue Jay TV crew, my name is Tim Calderwood saying thanks for watching. Again, our next broadcast comes your way on Friday. A doubleheader with the men and women against Illinois Wesleyan University, 5 and 7.30. We will not have audio for you from down in Decatur on Wednesday, which is the next stop for the Blue Jays in the CCIW slate. Thanks for watching, and have a great remainder of your Saturday night.